because I realized in like my mid to early twenties, there was a span of like a good like three to four years where I just like the people close to me had just died and stuff, like all the positive male role models in my life. On the 16th episode of 18 Avenue Podcast.com, meet very funny comedian Dave Squeaky Wheels. Dave was born with disability, but he does not let it stop him. Inspired by The Chappelle Show, Dave launched his career as a stand-up comedian performing for big and small crowd in Toronto and surrounding area where he lived for a few years in 2012, before returning home to Windsor, Ontario, or in the words of Dave, my true home. This is where Dave and our path would cross six to seven years ago at an open mic lounge, Milk, located in downtown Windsor. Upon my recent visit in Windsor, I reached out to Dave. He gladly accepted to do this podcast with me, for which I am always grateful. We talk about life, his family, his role model, and here are some video footages of the things we talked about. I, th I think he wrote a book, or he has an expression called The Bigotry of Low Expectations, mm. which, which I, I like the most because, to me, the time that we're in, it's, t it's too much identity first and not substance. It's substance later. If you would like to support the show, consider sharing, liking, commenting. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this audio video podcast. And don't forget to tag me on anything social at 18thAvenuePodcast.com. Enjoy the show. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of 18th Avenue Podcast right here in Windsor City. My name is Rico Bottles, and today I'm here with my special guest, Dave Squeaky Wheels. I, I'm the special, special guest because you've had regular special guests. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You never answered the question about the COVID. What's, yeah. what's going on with that? Oh, yeah. Um, let's see. Well, just to give you a timeline of, of what, ha what has happened since mm -hmm. all this went down because we did get on a tangent there. It's funny the headline stuff will keep you sidetracked, almost mm -hmm. like it's manufactured that way. <laughs> but uh, so what happened was uh, I've been living with like older relatives of my family, like mm -hmm. uh, some grandparents and, and aunts and whatnot. Uh, I'd lived there most of my life. Um, like I lived in Toronto for like a little bit in 2012. Uh, that's when I started doing shows up there. But it was like my main house here in Windsor. Mm -hmm. and. The place that we're uh, we're sitting in now became available when I got like this place in like a lot. It was like this job for a week, uh, trading on things, and then it actually gave me. Uh, after that, I went to uh, do like a little side project, uh, rhythm and cues that I was doing for a bit at C Jam, and whatnot. So uh, everything kind of came full circle, and everything kind of came all at once. So I got like the job and stuff. Uh, you know, I had waited forever for this place. Cause like what uh, I won't give too much away, but like basically I had to wait a long fucking time for just it. to get this apartment. Yeah, you that just you're in the now. apartment. They they put you on a list if you have uh, the means or whatever your income is. Yeah. Or not, so what are we talking about? A year or two years? Oh, like, I don't yeah, much longer than that, man. It was like like uh, two administrations ago. <laughs> no, not two. Like a presidential administration ago. It's like eight, no way. Eight, ten years. Eight, ten years. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. get this apartment. Yeah, it was uh, it was half the reign of Kobe and Shaq's championship run. Not even half. More than half, you know, picturing a little bit of the Celtics there. Wow. But um, so I, uh, I like was ready to schedule. I was ready to get this place. I was ready to move in. So I moved in here around November. Mm -hmm. So my birthday is like the middle of November, and so everything was like quote unquote normal for November till March basically. So I was just kind of going along as I was, you know, adjusting to life on my own, doing that, and then this fucking quarantine hits. Mm -hmm. Where, at least in the e beginning, you know, uh, apparently we can treat it now and there's a lot more breakthroughs, on, you know, whatever, follow the news, you know, whatever you want to follow. Mm -hmm. But I, uh, so like this is my first time being alone and stuff. You have to kind of adjust in terms of uh, you being responsible for things a little bit more, yeah, yeah. not having the support, just even having somebody in the house with you is such a change for me. So like those first from March to like May to June. It was just rough, like just rough, just very, uh, I don't know, what's what's the right way I can describe it? Not just in my head, but I was very uh, just doing things to distract myself for the sake of distracting. And not trying to face the reality of yeah, what's just 
facing the reality and and also just you you want to preoccupy yourself with something more uh something that where you can deflect the pain a little bit, you know? And that's when everything hit me. Because I realized in like my mid to early twenties, there was a span of like a good like three to four years where I just like the people close to me had just died and stuff. Like all the positive male role models in my life had like started dying. There was my grandfather who like had a long issue with Alzheimer's and stuff. And then there was a friend of mine who was a comic. He had like a heart att- he had a heart condition and so that attributed to something. Another close male role model of mine I had known since I was like 15. He died suddenly at Christmas. So it was just like one thing after another. And like. And this is all in the spam of last year. No, no. It, it was from about. Let's see. When did. From about like 2012 to 20. Up to 2016, 2017. Yeah. So like a span of four years. About four years there. And, like, sometimes you just kind of get numb to certain things because life will beat you down if you really let it. And I just kind of felt whatever. So I do shows and you go through the motions and I do whatever I go through the motions, but you're pretty disconnected, you know, mm-hmm. uh, in whatever way, way shape, or form. Uh, like I said, cannabis helps with that because it helps you realize what's going on with you, and that's when the people say, oh, I got too paranoid and stuff. It's like you're seeing things about your life that you otherwise would have never paid attention to or never understood gives you more sensitivity, um, a chance to kind of collect yourself and collect your thoughts. Mm -hmm. So within, within that quarantine, I think just everything hit me. I I hadn't dealt with all that shit before. I hadn't dealt with, you know, and as, as dudes, it's just different. I don't care what anybody says. We, we process emotion differently. Everybody processes emotion differently. You know, so in that span, I was just like, I was like, who gives a fuck? I was just like, who gives a fuck? I don't know when comedy's coming back. I don't know what I'm going to be able to do if it's outside. It's just not the same. There's, there's too many elements at play. There's, you know, at least inside you can just have some dickhead like yelling something out or somebody breaks a glass. Or you can play off of it. When you're outside, there's, you know, the ambulance going by. There's people coughing, you know, and it sucks because uh, when I first moved into this apartment, I had scheduled face licking parties that I was going to do, you know. I, face, yeah, face, face licking parties. You face know? licking party. Yeah, yeah. yeah you face. Know? <laughs> I, 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 you need it, to get. It was, into it was all Eskimo kisses. You know, it, it, that's okay. how I wanted to be greeted every time. Uh, you know, I wanted to just. So people would just lick your face, or you yeah, you, you were know, allowed to kind of. I wanted to lick return. everybody's hand. Just, you know, it was okay. like a high five, but kind of. Is like, that a thing? Yeah, it was going to be. I, oh. <laughs> you know, if it wasn't mask or no mask, you're allowed in. You <laughs> so you know, I, I I wanted to do that. I wanted to do a fucking licking speakeasy, which I think is gonna pop up. It, it's it's like it's like <laughs> it's gonna be the untouchables, but fucking <laughs> with sanitation hands. Sorry, I was getting too fucking serious, even for me. I didn't want it to right. be a lifetime movie. I had to right. do a joke. Um, <laughs> right. But yeah, so because of that, like, I, here's the thing. It's not that I didn't have support and stuff. I know I have people in my life who support me and stuff, but sometimes you just don't want to be fucking bothered. You know what I'm saying, Rico? You don't want to be bothered, but, you know, because uh, I feel like the, the real friends and the real people show up whenever, you know, they, they show up unprompted. But a lot of people, especially social media and stuff going on, because everything's so magnified now, a lot of it's just lift service. So I was, so was like, I just want to be away from this and be in my own little world and watch a ton of movies like thrillers and like a lot of cop movies, ironically, because I grew up watching those with my grandfather. So mm. like some like the old sitcom, Sanford and Son, All in the Family, shit mm. like that. Because mm. I, I want to know my roots, you know, just in general, mm-hmm. which we can get into in a second. Okay. Know, here. But uh, I think with all that and just now, uh, in, that, in that like three or four month span, I uh, decided, you know what, I need more of a schedule. I need to know when I'm going to work out. Because the gyms are closed, I can't just run outside. I gotta force myself to do this. So I forced myself to do that. Just write a, like a line or two each day, a sentence or two each day. Because it's almost like I had to trick myself into getting into writing, into getting into all that again. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I don't know. Does that answer your question? <laughs> yeah, I think that does answer my question. But I also want to go back to the part of uh, where you're realizing you're sitting here, suddenly everything is shut down in the country. Yeah. People realize a lot of relationships falling apart because they realize they're like, oh, I'm depressed. You know, this is, you know, they're having to deal with themselves now. Yeah. Whereas before they never had to do that. So that part where you're sitting in your apartment and you're like, shit, 
all this shit is coming back and I actually never dealt with this pain. I guess my question is like, how did you eventually just kind of like overcome that? Now you did mention that you started to watch a lot of TV show, but I mean, you would have done that anyway. Uh, I've been doing that, you know, I, I, I like movies and stuff. It, it's funny though. I don't, I'm not a big fan of, uh, I don't like loud sounds and stuff. So sometimes it's, it's, it's such a hilarious thing to admit, but it makes me, I'm going to feel like a bitch admitting it, but whatever. It's like, if you don't like, like loud a, sound. No, no. If there's like a big loud pop or like a big loud, whatever just jumps out at you. Cause okay. I grew up watching Lord of the Rings and like a couple of the Harry Potter yeah, movies. Yeah. And like, yeah. I like some fantasy movies, but if there's like an element or like some shit just pops up, you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. I like to, I like to know what's coming a bit. So sometimes I'll fast forward like, all right, I feel something's going to fucking pop up. What's this? You know? <laughs> and that's that's just like, you're not just talking just in reality. You're even talking just by like, you know, like a TV show, like a film or something like that. No, or you depends. just mean like. It in, depends. Like, uh, I don't know if you watched the show The Boys uh, recently. You, have no, you seen no, that? No. Uh, it's basically if superheroes were real and how terrifying they'd be if they were psychos. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, oh! Yeah, I I heard it. I heard about it. Yeah. I heard about it just recently. Yeah. Well, yeah. well. Spoiler alert if you haven't watched it, but whatever. It's just it's been out. There, there's a scene where uh, there's like a couple exploding. Like they have like a congressional meeting, and like people's heads start exploding. So, yes, yeah. I saw. Yes, I saw yeah. that clip. I saw that clip. Yeah. 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 No, um, no, no. Terrifying. You know, on its own with the with the uh, foreboding music that they played. But I find funny uh, when you play Benny Hill music or like even Three Stooges music, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> or any type of whatever, you know, or maybe it's like uh, a little bit of Mozart, you know, when they play the fireworks, mm -hmm. that's what I equate it yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. But like that type of shit uh, catches me off guard. But uh, getting back to the initial point what I did like, yeah, I, I like doing that stuff. But what got me out of it was, uh, I think, just writing stuff down talking to people like i said they were close to me uh taking some responsibility at least figuring out how i can navigate all this shit because you know i think grocery stores are hiring and other places are hiring but uh, if you want the reality it's video games video games i think you say oh it's escapism it's this and it's that it's like yes and no i think people use it as maybe just to kind of construct this ideal version of themselves and then uh you know, the danger is that you take your red pill or your blue pill it, and then you're stuck in that mm -hmm. virtual reality. You know, then it's like Ready Player One. But I, I guess it's the opposite for me. If, like, when you're playing sports games or, like, uh, the single-person game, like an Uncharted or, like, a, excuse me, like an Assassin's Creed or whatever, it gives you uh, the feeling of, like, you know, accomplishing something. You're meeting a goal. So you're getting that morphine drip, mm -hmm. feeling like you did something. Even though... You're not, you know, you're fucking, you're sitting around or whatever. That's, I get the argument too. What I'm saying is that you use the principles that you learn playing that game and apply them in real life. Mm -hmm. It's kind of what the second Jumanji was. And I think that was a fascinating way they did that was they spoke to a generation of people that think they're wasting their lives. Mm -hmm. But they're saying, no, you're learning valuable things from this. There's elements that it is escapism. It is just kind of fucking off and finding something else. But you can take, uh, for instance, teamwork. You know, there's addition, learning how to navigate space and time, problem solving, um, how to act, how to handle pressure. Mm -hmm. All these things come into factor because, you you know, then when you, you learn that you have to breathe or something. Or if you're hyperventilating, you make shittier decisions. Or if you're more exhausted, you make shittier decisions. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's what I, I got. Mm. Sure. That's wild. I haven't played video games in years.